I, I want to start with uh, one of, well, we'll go with a couple of the, the questions that, you know, demystify some of the, the FUD versus fact here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when this announcement was, was first made, you know, we talk about 56 plus products and SKUs that were abandoned or uh, completely destroyed by VMware. Yeah. Can you shed some light onto that for, for the audience? Well, I, I think really what's happened here, guys, is, yeah, all the cards gone away. Uh, there has been a push with Broadcom to simplify the offering. And for a majority of our clients, we're really looking at two different SKUs that everyone's going to fall under. There's um, what's called their, uh, their VMware Cloud Foundation product, which is a majority of those a la carte offerings that were a part of the old VMware. So anything that has to do with operations, uh, Aria is involved if you're doing containers, Tanzu, um, as well as uh, some of the, um, the hybrid cloud offerings. So SDDC, for uh, doing uh, VMware both in the cloud and on-prem, um, even, it, even down to kind of the support offerings, their, uh, their SRE uh, support offering where uh, they, they give you engineering support to, uh, to build out your infrastructure. Um, the kind of the traditional data center SKU would be the uh, VMware vSphere Foundation SKU. And what that includes is really vSAN, uh, your uh, hypervisor, ESXi, uh, Enterprise Plus, uh, vCenter, uh, again, Tanzu, and uh, kind of the ARIA uh, standard suite. ARIA, if you don't know, it's a rebranding of uh, VROPS, the old VROPS, the old VROPS. So those are the two SKUs you're looking at. It's take it or leave it. You can't add or remove different products, so you're going to fall under one or the other. And that's really what the pricing is going to include. Technically, they've dropped the price on the hypervisor and they've dropped the price on uh, a number of these products as well. Unfortunately, you may be paying for a product now that you don't currently use. So that's where some of the price increase starts to come in. And I think that unpacks perfectly from a standpoint of customers are seeing 2x, 3x price hikes. Mm-hmm. The reason for that is generally speaking is you're you're buying packages of software, you're buying bundles of software. And if you're already a VMware shop and you're using and capitalizing on um, you know, that particular investment, then your price hikes in, in many instances are, are going to be non-existent if, if maybe you would even see a reduction in some cases uh-huh. based upon the way that the software has been provisioned in these packages. Mm-hmm. But most oftentimes we see a lot of customers that are, that are a, la, a la carte. What if, what if I already own VMware in this perpetual method? I've already bought my licenses and, su- and subscriptions and I have my support and sure I have a maintenance window coming up, but I'm a perpetual license holder of VMware. What, what now? Perpetual, you own the software. It's not going to just shut off uh, the day your support ends. Um, again, they've made some announcements about doing some security patches going forward with perpetual licenses. Uh, what, does not renew and what you can't purchase today is additional perpetual licenses uh, and their uh, support and subscription uh, offerings. uh, They are not renewing those going forward. So you're going to fall under this new licensing scheme and these new uh, VMware SKUs. How does this perpetual decision impact things like VxRail and other competitive offerings? How do you think? I, I think, you know, it's still probably a little bit too early to, to know definitively what the impact is. I think yeah. there's still some yeah. uh, negotiation going on behind the scenes. Yeah, uh, right now uh, they've pulled OEM licensing. So I, I think that's the biggest, the biggest change. How that's going to play out for products like VxRail is still to be determined. 